Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933 here and in today's Cisco certification video practice exam we're going to be concentrating on OSI layers 1 and 2 but I have a feeling it sometimes happens uh, layer 3 just might rear its ugly head so we'll take a look at that in just a moment. I want to thank everybody for hanging in there with me. The on-demand mode for the CCNA Mastermind webinar will launch in January 2010. It was supposed to be a little earlier but let's just say that a little bit of dental work in September ended up being a lot of dental work in October, November, and December but all is well now. We'll also be having CCNP on-demand webinars Kindle versions of our NP and NA books and much more on the way in 2010. Also want to remind you that now my 40 minute totally ad free Ether Channel webinar is now available on the Bulldog blog. You see the URL there and also our YouTube channel. So since it's 40 minutes for YouTube purposes we had to segment it into a couple of different parts but it's definitely worth your time. It's a webinar I've taught to thousands of students around the world over the last few years and now you can watch it whenever you darn well get ready. So let's jump into today's exam and we're going to start with a little hex conversion. I want you to take the hex value AF7 and convert it to decimal. And as always for my video practice exams we go through the questions a little quickly so you might want to pause the video while you do that conversion. Out of these four which of these requires some kind of reset or router reload in order for them to take effect? And again, all my questions are the dreaded choose all that apply. Let's go to question three. Which of these will serve as a kind of password when you are using port security on a Cisco switch? Let's go on to question four. Uh, I took the question out of here because we had so many choices. Which of these is associated with OSI layer one? And I've got a bonus question here for you uh, on the live equipment. And you'll see that I've got the command show VLAN brief here. And we see our five default VLANs. And we see one VLAN, uh, VLAN 23, that I created. The key here is that assuming, and taking my word for it, that this is a 12-port switch, we're definitely missing some ports on the right-hand side there, right? Under ports, we've got one through eight, excuse me, one through nine here in VLAN 1, port 2 is in VLAN 23, but we're definitely missing some uh, ports there, right? 10, 11, and 12. Given the default settings of a Cisco 2950 switch, what are, what are those ports probably doing? And even that term is probably a good hint for you. What are they doing? And what command will verify the answer that you just gave me? So we'll go back to the live equipment here in a moment and take a look at that. And let's go up to converting this hex value. You'll notice that I did put the A and the F in uppercase and lowercase respectively, but that does not matter for hex conversion. It's a little bit of a red herring, so you do want to watch out for that. When you have three characters in a hex value, you're looking from left to right at units of 256, 16, and 1. So if we're looking at A units of 256, A in hex is 10 in decimal. So we're looking at 10 units of 256, which is going to give us 2,560. If we have F units of something, then we have 15 units of it. And that's 15 units of 16, which equals not 16, certainly, but 240. And then finally, if we have 7 of something, we obviously have 7 of it. And that's 7 units of 1, which equals 7. So just add up those three decimal values then, and you've got your answer. But that's the kind of thing you can practice given 5 minutes of spare time. You don't need a practice exam. You don't even need one of my videos. All you need is a piece of paper and a pencil. Just make up your own little conversion questions just like that. So let's take a look at question 2 here. I'm going from top to bottom. You don't need to reset anything when you change a router host name. If you add a default static route, you don't need to reset anything. It's going to show up in your routing table. Even changing the administrative distance of a static route, it doesn't require you to reload the router. But changing that OSPF RID does. That's the OSPF router ID, and it's one of those situations 
where you either have to actually do one of two things. You remember what those are? You can either reload the router or you can clear your IP OSPF process. And either one of those is going to mean that your adjacencies are going to drop. So it's definitely not something you want to do on a production network when, uh, say, everybody's there. But the only one of those four that really requires a router reload is D. Your password when you're using port security on a Cisco switch is the source MAC address of the frame. Because remember, your Cisco switch looks at the source MAC address first for a couple of different reasons. One is that it uses that value to build the switching table. But the other, if you've got port security uh, enabled, your source MAC address is basically a, a password. Out of these, which are associated with OSI layer 1? Well, definitely A is, because I always say it's all 1s and zeros. MAC addresses are associated with layer 2 of the OSI model. IP addresses with layer 3. D, when you're dealing with electricity, your actual electrical signal that is at the physical layer of the OSI model. Telnet is definitely not at layer 1, but cables are anything physical like that. So out of this list, your 1s and zeros, electricity, and cables are definitely associated with the physical layer of the OSI model. Now let's take a look at this. With this show VLAN brief, as I mentioned, we're missing some ports and I wanted you to tell me where they were given the default settings of a Cisco 2950 switch and what they might be doing. So that was your big hint because they are trunking. And I'm going to run show interface trunk here, a handy command to run if you're just missing some ports there and you don't know what they're doing or where they are. And here you see where they are, or a couple of them anyway because you see port 10 there and you should definitely be familiar before you take the NA exam with this mode encapsulation native VLAN and that kind of thing but also you've got a PO1 here and this throws a lot of people the first time they see it but that's port channel 1 and that is the logical representation of an ether channel so that's just a little additional plug for you to come out or while you're on YouTube to watch that Ether Channel webinar because it will definitely serve you well on the exam and in the real world. But again, if you don't see ports here under Show VLAN or Show VLAN Brief, always run Show Interface Trunk. The reason that you don't see these trunking ports under Show VLAN Brief is that by definition the ports you see under Show VLAN Brief belong to one VLAN and one VLAN only but trunk ports belong to all VLANs. So you definitely want to keep that in mind, and that's a good real-world command to know as well. Again, head on out to the blog or if you're on YouTube and check out that free Ether Channel webinar. And again, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE, number 12933.